There is no question at all that the astrophotography mode in Gcam on Google phones, uh, well, it's just sensational for astrophotography, but how can we get something like this powerhouse S22 Ultra to do what this does? Back when I was just taking astrophotography photos with my DSLR, what I would do is take multiple images and stack them in a, a software program on your computer, and that would help eliminate the digital noise that's inherent with astrophotography with any sort of camera. The reason for this is that because we're shooting things in such low light, we need to increase the ISO on that camera. When we increase the ISO, we increase the level of digital noise that comes across that image. This is the S22 Ultra, and the main camera on this, when we use the uh, rule of 500, we're going to be wanting to shoot around 21 or so seconds, maybe 22 seconds. What we can do though, when we stack these images, I'm gonna take a number of photos, just 10 seconds long. I'm gonna put the ISO at around 800, 10 seconds long, and do about 30 photos. Once I've done that, I'll bring it in here, I'm gonna put it into a program on my Mac, and if you're a Windows person, I'll show you how to do it as well. So what I did, I went out and took some photos with the S22 Ultra. The settings that I used on this, because we're trying to really play by that rule of 500, that is 500 divided by the focal length, that's gonna give you the maximum shutter speed that you want to use on this particular camera, on any camera for that matter. And it works out with this particular one, it's gonna be about 20, 21 seconds. But because I wanna stack them, I'm going to decrease that even more and increase the ISO. So my settings for this photo, or for many photos, is going to be 10 second shutter speed, ISO uh, 1600, and I'm gonna take about 25 or so photos. Once I've done that, I'll bring them into here, put them on the computer, edit them in Lightroom, edit them all the same so the settings are exactly the same, and then we'll put them into a stacking program. Here are all of the photos. Now, last night I did some testing with different uh, ISOs and um, focusing and stuff, but what I found is that I've actually kept a couple of the photos in here and you don't want them to be in this batch editing if they're a little bit different in the setting. So if your ISO is the same, your shutter speed is the same, you should be fine to do what I'm doing. But when I look through the metadata of these photos, this one here was only shot at ISO 800. This one here was 1600, and the last one down the end here was 1600. So I'm comfortable in saying that the 27 photos are the same, but that first one, uh, it was a different setting. So I'm just gonna get rid of that one, remove it out of here because it doesn't, it's going to screw up the whole system. Now, if I look at the first photo, then look at the last photo, you'll see the galactic core has moved through the sky. What I want to do is edit this first one. I'm just gonna edit it a pretty uh, haphazard if you like. Um, might get rid of a little bit of the dehazing. Increase the brightness a little bit and I'm going to increase the contrast a bit because that's going to help the stacking program in a little bit. If I zoom right in, you can see there's a lot of digital noise in this and that is why we're stacking it. It's gonna get rid of these of that digital noise. That's all the editing I'm gonna do here because I'll edit the last photo um, separately. So if I highlight all these, synchronize the settings, synchronize, it's gonna go through, apply the same settings to all those photos. I'm going to export these now into a folder and then we'll bring them into our stacking program. The program that we're going to use here is Starry Landscape Stacker and that's a really good stacking app uh, for the OS or Mac OS machines. If you're a Windows user, you can use uh, Sequitor. It's, I'll link it down at the bottom there. It's also a really good stacking program. It does basically the same thing as what we're going through here. So open up Starry Landscape Stacker. I'm going to get all the photos, those 27 photos, click and highlight, open those up. It may give me a fault here, it may not, it does. Uh, and one of those faults is it doesn't know what the dark and, and uh, light photos are. When you're using this with DSLRs, I'll generally put the lens cap on and take a solid black photo to give it a reference. I didn't do that with the phone. I'm just gonna make all these light really quickly. That is to say that this is a, a, a correctly exposed photo for what I'm trying to achieve here. If you don't do this, it screws it up pretty badly. They're all ticked now, continue that. It's going to go ahead and open up all these photos. All these little dots that are here, 
is eliminating what it thinks is the noise. If I see something in the sky right here now, I'm going to also highlight that by adding some dots. But to be honest, this looks pretty good to me. It does a really good job straight off the bat. And the machine that I'm using here, it's a pretty powerful machine, the Mac Studio, and it's just, it just powered through that pretty quickly. So it may go a little bit slower on yours. We'll see how you go. Um, I'm just gonna find the sky because it doesn't necessarily do a great job with that. I'm just gonna increase the brush size to make it a little bit quicker. So you don't need to sit here and watch me going all delicate with what's happening in the sky. It's not quite right along through the trees there, but for the sake of what I'm showing you here, this is just perfect. Um, and now we're just gonna hit align and composite and let it do its thing. It's aligning 26 images. Won't be long. If, like I said before, if you've got a machine that's not that powerful, this can take some time. There's a lot of processing that's going on in here. Almost done. There we go. <laughs> that's bloody amazing. What I'll do now, I'm just going to save minimum horizon star. I'm just going to go with probably the first one actually. The noise and we'll save current image. It's going to save it as a TIFF file. It should save both. It'll give, end up giving us the mask as well. Now what I'll do, I'll open up that file in Lightroom and I'll show you the difference that you get between a non-stacked image and a stacked image. This is the photo that we've just stacked. Put it back into Lightroom now. We'll do an overall edit on this photo. It looks like there's a bit of magenta to that already. So I'm just gonna decrease that tint just a little, just a lot by the look of that and I'm gonna make the whole thing a little bit cooler. That's quite good there. Um, decrease the shadows. I don't really like the foreground in this photo. Uh, it's just a silhouette photo and I'm gonna decrease the blacks just a little bit. Dehazing's already done. Just try a little bit more. I don't mind that at all. And we'll increase the saturation because I want that galactic core to really pop in this. Probably too far that one. Increase the brightness, the vibrance a little bit. So I'm gonna add a mask. This one right here, the radial mask. And increase the clarity, it's done. And the dehazing in that core a little bit as well. That's pretty good. So I'm just gonna, done, done with that, I'm gonna export this photo and we'll look at what the difference is between this photo that's stacked and denoised, if you like, and a photo that's not. Here are the two photos, this is a single exposure JPEG file. I haven't done anything with the noise on this photo. Uh, and this one here is the stacked image and the difference between these two is mind blowing. The stacked image has got no noise at all or minimal noise. That's an incredible result to get that out of a mobile phone camera. It's just, it's crazy, crazy good. I'd be stoked to get that with a DSLR to be honest. If you want to have a look at these two photos up close and personal, I'll put them onto the website, shanemoston.com, and you can download them, have a look at them yourself. And uh, that's it for today, guys. I'll catch you later.